Bears podcast. It is April. That snuck up on us. April 1st. It's draft month. How about that? Adam Hogue, Mark Carmen, Nicholas Moriano with you on a okay Monday in Chicago. Um, hey, Adam, how are you? I'm, I'm good. How are you? Why'd you ask me like that? Because we've had a morning already, and I'm very excited for a mock draft show, and it's great to see you and you, Nick, yep. and you, Steven. Yep, we're going to mock the first nine picks, especially Carm's picks. We're going to especially mock those ones. Wow. The show. It continues. Bring it on. My picks are genius. My picks are the best. My takes are amazing, and everybody knows it, and they love me. And we, used not- a, we used to have a president that would say things like that. It's not like you were doing a, an impression. Did you just there. compare me to the My dog? picks are the best. My picks are amazing. Okay. They're the best picks. You can haze me on literally anything. Don't do that again. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll take it. Um, well, we're here. We're ready to go. Uh, we also hit fifty three thousand subscribers over the weekend. Bang bang. Uh, we also lost. Thank you. We also lost a thousand um, because of Bragg's doing nothing but covering Purdue and tweeting about Purdue. Maybe we lost and, Bragg's too. Did they and, win? Yes, they. Oh man, own. they won me a bet. Thank you. Purdue. My favorite thing Bragg's did over the weekend was he tweeted this very heartfelt post with this guy, and he was like, "I love this guy." I had no oh, idea who that person was. Didn't say who he was. Oh, I didn't real. I, I didn't read all of it. <laughs> There's one person <laughs> in the world out there that would have known who that guy is. He was like the director of player personnel for Purdue or something like that. He's the guy. He's the guy that uh, Bragg's explained is the reason why he's a Purdue fan. Oh, okay. But again, sentimental. Not post. really explained in the post. So anyway, that was fun. Hopefully, Bragg's is watching right now. We miss him and um, deeply. Hey, go Purdue, man! I'm hoping they. I'm all about Purdue yeah. right now. They're the only team I have left, and I can still win my bracket if they win it all. They're not going to because the, UConn the is going to win it. Hey, that's going to be a good – I think that would be a good game. Though. Purdue shoots well. They can win that game. It was Sasha Stefanovic, is who you were talking yes. about, from uh, Crown Point where Bragg's is from. Yeah. He grew up watching him. There you go. He's like, known as his family since like fourth grade, he said. Shout yeah. out yeah. shout out IOL, uh, Illinois fans. I know, you're in the, I know you're out there, and uh, you had a great run to the Elite Eight, and then you – Let up a 30 30- – you, you had one of the greatest 30 0 runs in the history of the NCAA tournament against you. That was amazing. That's By the nuts. way, the Cats played UConn tougher, Illinois, less than Northwestern. That's yeah. why I started uh, that. And I'd like to apologize to Greg for not knowing that Sasha Stefanovic, is that his name, uh, is the seventh all time three point shooter in Purdue history. Terrible job by me. I should know at least the top 10 of three-point shooters in every college program, especially Big Ten programs across the country. It's a terrible job by me. Yeah, Caitlin, Clark, exactly Caitlin right. Clark's yeah. number one. So. I couldn't even tell you he's number one for the Badgers. Number, I'm supposed to know who number seven is in Purdue history? Well, he's just, he's just flexing that he's, he's got a friend that's number seven. Um, anyway. Yes. 53,000 subscribers. We're going for 54. Brian Erlacher coming up here Let's soon. Let's go. And uh, please hit that subscribe button. Remember to hit that like button every show, even if it seems tedious to you. It's really not. Just hit that mm-hmm. button. It helps grow the show, puts it out there on the YouTube algorithm. None of us know really how that works, and that's fine. But all we know is if you hit subscribe and you hit like, it helps us. It helps grow CHGO. We greatly appreciate your help in doing that. It takes zero effort. A um, little bit of effort. Minimal effort. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Just a, just a tiny just bit. Trying we'll, to give credit to the effort. We'll thank our new diehards a little bit later in the show. We've already gotten a preview behind the scenes um, of what Karn has to say about one of them. Little teaser there. It's worth sticking around. Also, um, our draft party. It's now oh, April. It is coming up. Sources are telling me that we are almost sold out for Thursday night. Ooh. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how many tickets we have left, but it's not a lot. So Thursday night, our big, huge celebration party that's going to quickly turn into who are they drafting number nine that's mm-hmm. going to be fun we're also going to about to talk about that right now um and then day two let's be honest we're going to continue the party it's a friday night you don't have anything better to do 
come hang out. Just come hang. We I, we need friends. No one's coming right now. It's like gonna be my bar mitzvah where everybody went to the open. It was. It's what happened on my bar mitzvah, man. The whole the whole. Uh, Everybody at Edgewood Junior High School was invited, but it was the Bears won the Super Bowl the year prior, and then it was the opening of the Giants, and no one came. I need people That's to come Friday up. night. I just told you Thursday's almost sold out. Why did you follow that up with nobody's coming? On Friday night, no one's coming. We have nobody coming. That's not accurate. We need more people to come Friday night. And even night. if it was accurate, why would you, you, why would you say that? Be- because I want to guilt people into coming. Please come. <laughs> We're going to be lonely. I need friends. We've literally had meetings about how you shouldn't do that. Those are meetings that I don't I don't Listen believe to, in. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, it's good to know that even though Braggs isn't here today, he is he embodied in Carm is here to bring the nonsense. Listen, um, it's going to be the greatest Friday night of all time. I'm singing with those uh, with the with the with the with the group that's singing. Dalton and the sheriffs. Dalton, Dalton and the Dalton. I'm going for that. I'm not even going for our show. I'm going for Dalton, Carm, and the sheriffs. Uh, also, Gary Fetzik's going to be there. The reason to go in itself, don't, right there. Don't, I mean, don't listen to Carm. Just listen to me. It's gonna. Be, a lot of people are coming. It's gonna be a great time, and tickets are running out. So buy them. Okay, we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's coming up in like three and a half weeks. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Bragg says Bragg's. never let Carm promote anything ever again. That is a new rule that I'm. Yeah. I am well, putting it right now. I guarantee you, no, I'll get more people there than Bragg's, as he's promoted Ooh, it multiple, multiple challenge. times. That is a challenge I want. I, I will take see. him down. Also, you know him. You. He's legitimately angry. You just said that. I don't care. <laughs> come for Carm. Don't come for Braggs. All chgo.com to get your tickets, guys. Thank you. We might have to have shirts. Every anybody that say Team Braggs or Team Carm. Anybody you have to who, declare yourself at the party. How's well, this? Kevin, the White we, Sox did something like that with the Team Benetti, Team Stone yes. thing. Mm. We could do our own version of that. I like we that should idea. Do that. Team Carm, Team Braggs. Listen, Gary, Side. Gary Fensick's going to be there. We're going to talk 85 Bears. I know that people love that. And by the way, if you sign up today, that means your team Carm, just to prove it to Braggs and to you that I'm promoting amazingly. So if you sign up for Friday today, you're on my team. And by the end of the show, if we get five signups, then you will bow down to me. And so will you. And so will you. And Stephen, you will too. All right. Can we get into the <laughs> Nicholas, mock draft? I'm going for Braggs. Come on in for Braggs then. <laughs> Yeah, again, we want people to sign up. So Team Poppy, Tony Moy. That's Carm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so let me just clarify. If you <clears throat> sign up right now for the party, you will not necessarily have to be Team Carm because I just want to make sure people actually do sign up and they understand that. <laughs> Jacob Stout, Team Cram, my guy. Thank All you, right, Jacob. Um, we are going to simulate the top nine picks in this draft to try to get a better idea of what might have to happen. For the Bears to get your guy, the guy that you might want them to get. So I always think this is a, a fun exercise. People can make fun of mock drafts all they want as long as you enter with the right uh, mentality mm-hmm. that um, we're not necessarily trying to predict the future here as much as just do a fun exercise. Um, teams do this too in their draft rooms leading up to the draft. They literally do this as well. And again, they're doing it or uh, an educational exercise to help them be best prepared for what actually is going to happen on draft night, which is why we're doing this too, and hopefully you'll learn a little something from it as well. So we start with the first overall pick in the 2024 draft, and uh, I think at this point... Who could it be? We're pretty much prepared for who this is going to be. I uh, The way this is going to work is I have the number one pick, Karm has the number two pick, and Nick has the number three pick, um, which means he also has the number nine pick. So, um, a lot of know, pressure. We had a team meeting, and uh, we it was. I think everybody can understand this. Just it actually, it was sort of just assumed that we weren't going to give Carm one of the Bears picks, just to make sure that it goes well. Wow, the shots are just con- continuous. I'm not today. listening. Keep going. <laughs> well, I just, just pick Caleb. I'm and starting hot on him one day. <laughs> so the number one pick in the. 2024 NFL Draft, Caleb Williams, quarterback, University Southern California. Going to the Chicago Bears, uh, we've talked about this endlessly. We all know why, and um, this is all basically a formality at this point. So we might as well just move on. 
to number two because this is where the fun starts. Old move. Just kidding. The Washington Commanders, Ooh. and this was Carm's pick. So we did have a deep debate about this and what the Commanders are going to do. I also had a deep debate with myself. Um, at one point, it was Drake May. At one point, it was Jaden Daniels. At one point, it was Jaden Daniels, and then it was Drake May. Uh, but And there was an elbow issue that popped up with Daniels over the weekend yeah. where there was a picture that looked really, 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 really weird. Uh, like he's got a pouch on there, which I've had, by the way. Those are painful, and they take forever to go away. But that's not a serious injury. And there's been enough talk by enough people specifically, uh, you know, we're, Dan Orlovsky, who I'm going to lean into here, that ultimately I believe the commanders are going to go for the guy that is more dynamic, both running and throwing the football, more so suited for today's game. And I do think they take Jaden Daniels, the quarterback out of LSU, and, they, and leaving you the opportunity to take the Carolina product uh, as the commanders go for high end here, high hope, and uh, big time talent in Jaden. Yeah, I think that's where it's going to get really interesting in the draft. What happens at number two? What quarterback really is selected at number two? But, you know, I'm on the clock now with the New England Patriots. And, you know, I'm just going to make this easy. I'm taking Drake May out of North Carolina. And, look, you go from Mac Jones, who is a stable, stationary quarterback, to a guy like Drake May, who is not as mobile as a Jaden Daniels, but definitely can get outside the pocket, can hurt you with his legs, has big-time throws. Does he have a tendency to maybe go for a big game hunter at times? Yes, but I think it is time for New England to look for that next franchise quarterback. You get a guy like Drake May, who obviously has all the talent, prototypical size too, and again, it's just so much different from what they had in Mac Jones. That's going to give the New England Patriots options to, to kind of utilize all the strengths that Drake May has. And, you know, they, they kind of start new with a new head coach, new franchise quarterback, and go from there and see if they can start competing again uh, in that division. So I would um, have done this differently in that I would have definitely taken May with the commander's pick. Um, Why? Because I don't have – but this is just me personally. I think we're doing this the right way in terms of how this might actually play out on draft night. Um Although I still find it hard to believe that whoever picks number two is going to take Daniels over May. I think May is considerably better. I think there's a pretty decent gap, too. Um, I am not as high on Jaden Daniels. I don't see enough of him reading the full field. Um, I think he's a little bit more polished in terms of <clears throat> throwing with a little bit more anticipation and getting the ball out faster than Justin Fields was. But I see a lot of Justin Fields in Jaden Daniels' game. Um, I think he's limited in terms of how he reads the field. He's smaller. He I'm tiny. not talking about height. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about body Frame. size and strength. And if Justin Fields had, has had trouble staying healthy, I think Jaden Daniels is going to have trouble staying healthy. So for me, Drake May is not only the bigger – uh, prospect who can move again he's not gonna have the same straight line speed as Jaden Daniels might but he can move plenty he's an athlete he's gonna be more durable and I think he's a better passer um, so I would I would take Drake May and I, I'm not even sure I would take I mean I wouldn't take Jaden Daniels in the top 10 but is he gonna go in the top 10 is he gonna go in the top three might, might, might he even go number two overall yeah he might mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that that's how it how it should play out when we're looking at this three years later. My, my biggest quibble uh, on, with the top three that we just did is, is it has nothing to do with the top three. It's actually what the Patriots have done at three. You, had, you could have gotten Justin Fields if you're New England for literally nothing, and you have no actual real interesting candidate there that you could bring a, a quarterback along behind slowly. Instead, you chose to go with Jacoby Brissett, which – and then you got Bailey Zabby behind him, where you literally could have had Fields for nothing, let him be there for a year, see if he learns. Put and You could have either drafted a QB there and or traded out and helped yourself down the line um, to fortify a roster that needs fortification. So I, I just don't like – I'm not really wild about the way the Patriots are doing, doing their offseason. Well, so that's our top three picks, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May. So three straight quarterbacks. And I think the question is, and this is the big question, does a fourth quarterback go before the Bears draft mm. number nine? And there's been some talk about whether or not the Cardinals could accomplish a trade 
and moving, you know, move back and still get their guy, Marvin Harrison Jr. I already saw in the comments, we have somebody from PHNX in there making sure that <laughs> um, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the pick. Um, we'll have to see on that. Uh, and if, before we do that, we'll call us a little bit of a tease. We got to make sure that you are enjoying the right beverage mm. when the draft comes. And that, of course, is Miller Lite. What are the Bears going to do with their picks? Well, that's what we're doing right now on this show. And we've seen some wild selections over the years. We'll see where this one goes at number nine. But there's only one selection that every football fan can share. That's an ice-cold Miller Lite. The draft has changed over the years, but Miller Lite is still the perfect beer for the draft. And don't forget, the Miller Lite is also a proud sponsor of the Bears. Bear down. Miller Lite knows that beer lovers want their light beer to taste like beer. That's why they brew a light beer that's light on calories, not taste. Because what's the point of having a beer if you can't taste it? So kickoff comes around again. Enjoy the beer that tastes like the season. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories to get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash CHGO football. Again, that's MillerLite.com slash CHGO football. Or you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories, 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. And a shout out to our friends at Empire Today. If you're getting your flooring, looking for an upgrade to your amazing home, Empire Today is the best place to get new flooring. It's a bunch of copycats out there, but Empire's not going to be beaten on quality. They're not going to be beaten on service, speed. So you will get some competitors out there with the low quality products, and they'll give you lower prices. But again, you're putting this into your home. Put the good stuff in. So Empire is going to give you the best quality, the best service, the best speed for your money. And they also make shopping for floors simple with a curated product selection. Their philosophy is to help you find what you need, not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitutes. It's going to make it simple for you. And you're going to be extremely happy as they pride themselves on their convenient shop at home service, helping customers shop for floors where they use their floors. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners get $350 off. They get that discount when they use the code CHGO. Restrictions do apply. See empiretoday.com forward slash CHGO for details. We have a Twitter poll going on today that you should check out. Uh, it is, are you team car or are you team brags wow and um so we'll update you within 24 hours on how that all works out but the uh, um we'll see this is my first time here oh about it's it. definitely yeah. brags so this is where and i actually tweeted <laughs> this last <laughs> night wow good um <laughs> it's very easy to tell which tweets are tweeted by brags um, like yesterday, there was this, the random cole comment talking about purdue I'm like who could have tweeted that <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. who, who could have tweeted that? Um, so, yeah, we, we we usually try to come up with, you know, consensus polls that we all think would be a good topic. In this case, we have somebody who's gone rogue. We might actually have to take away his access. Yeah, we have point. a lot of people that have access, but... Yeah, well, listen, the guy's in a, a tremendous loser, and um, I, I'm actually embarrassed that I have to be associated with him. But I would like to uh, congratulate Mama Braggs. The great Barb, yeah, that was nice. yeah, making it to the Elite Eight and seeing that her team cool. go to the Final Four. <laughs> Bragg's in the stands. You mean literally every tweet? Question mark. Yeah, yeah Bragg, Bragg okay. was he was busy this weekend. Uh, yeah. he, was, he was tweeting nice. from CHGO Bears and he was yeah. doing his. his He's producer. a grinder. Oh, he works harder than Bragg. He's a grinder, man. It's, it's too bad his arms aren't long enough so he could pat his bat. Back better than he already does. Um, Weightlifting? This guy just nonstop working. Yeah, literally. You might want to check the word literally on that. You might also want to to check the tweet from four hours ago to see who posted that one. Um, If you're understanding this for that. Mm. Which is why I just voted Carm in the poll. Um, It's it's an obvious uh, play. Unfortunately, you're going to have to buy some bots. You have to buy some bots. Um, Bringing that back up. You are currently uh, only have 20.3% of the vote. But I love my 20.3. You're the best 20.3. <laughs> we don't need 100.3. We only need 20.3. You are my people. There you go. Okay. <laughs> the Arizona- By the way, I'm <laughs> way better. Yeah, <laughs> we could tell. it like that. I believe it. Uh, you, you are way better. Uh, All right, we're at pick four. Am I Arizona. Right? Arizona. Now, this is where things get interesting. Let's go. Because... 
The Chargers have the fifth pick. Mm-hmm. They're not drafting the quarterback. The Cardinals have the fourth pick. They're not drafting a quarterback. But is a team like the Vikings, are they going to be trying to move up here? Could the Broncos be trying to move up here? Maybe the Raiders be trying to move up here. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. how far do you have to go? <clears throat> because the Giants are at number six. And that's why I think everybody's kind of keyed in on the Chargers at number five. But if you get really anxious, you might want to just go all the way to number four to make sure that you, you end up guy. next in the yeah. pecking order if you want J.J. McCarthy. Um, in this case, and I know that the Cardinals GM has basically come out and said, hey, you know, yeah, we're open for business on this pick. But we're not going to quite get to a, the trade scenario yet. We're going we're gonna to say that the Cardinals stand pat here. Just go ahead and draft their guy that everyone that's a Cardinals fan seems to want, and that's Marvin Harrison Jr. going number four to the Arizona Cardinals. That was the logical play. I think that's the right play. Good job, Adam. Excellent performance by you. Got to get Kyler Murray a a guy like that. Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, if you want to see what Kyler can do, I think that guy's going to help out a lot. So I think PHNX, the... You know, Arizona fan base are happy about the pick. So that puts the Chargers on the clock, which means I'm on the clock, which means you have a lot to consider here, uh, including Joe Alt, uh, which, look, uh, Jim Harbaugh's out there saying all positive things about offensive linemen and... I believe, Hogue, did you have something to do with this this quote that's on our YouTube screen? Yes, I did. I filmed it. I did not ask the question, though. I just happened to walk up at the right moment and film what happened to end up being a viral video that Kayla Williams even posted. So Harbaugh said, the offensive line to me is important. If I asked you the question, what position group depends on no other position? Wait, can I kind of do it in a Harbaugh voice? Sure. I'd love you to. I don't necessarily have a Harbaugh impression. I think I can maybe get the, the cadence a little bit, but... The offensive line, to me, is important. If I ask you the question, what position group depends on no other position group to be good, but every other position group depends on them to be good, what position group is that? Offensive line. And there you go. Right. Slow pace. No, I thought it was yeah. good. It was good. It was good. It was good. It. You needed to be a little weirder and more <laughs> yeah. annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, That's how you get the Harbaugh. Well, and, and when he got to the end of that whole thing, he just like sort of like went. So I'm excited. April first, let's go. Let's get going. He is an interesting April 1st. dude. Very so the Chargers, I think, get started today. Actually, well, or maybe it was uh, April second. No, I think it's today. Anyway, um, what's happening here? What's so, happening? Well, I thought long and hard about Alt, which makes a whole lot of sense for them. But I also thought long and hard about the fact that the Minnesota Vikings have to know that. The New York Giants are sitting there at six, and they're most likely going to take J.J., which is what the Bears want to have happen. So I'm partly, hopefully, not too influenced, but just hoping this goes this way, that there, somebody is going to take J.J. in the top you know, eight picks here, which I think is going to happen. And I've got Minnesota coming up to do it. The Chargers, with needs all over the field, um, they will trade out of the five, letting Minnesota come up. The Chargers get for that pick, for trading out the 11th overall pick in the 2024 draft this year, they also get a first-round pick next year and a fifth-round pick next year from Minnesota, all for going down six picks. Jim will not be able to, and the Chargers more specifically, will not be able to pick Alt with that on the table from Minnesota, who is desperate for a quarterback, so they come up to, tr- to draft J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, but they're, you know, and this is be a big move, obviously, within the division. Um I I identified the Vikings as a target for JJ, you know, at the combine. I still think that there's um, a lot of reasons to believe that's true. You don't just let Kirk Cousins go unless you're you're uh, you know drafting his replacement. And they're kind of in a weird spot where they they could be desperate, or they might be settling for Michael Penix or Bo Nix. Which I mean, if you're a Bears fan, root root for Bo Nix to yeah. end up in Minnesota. Trust me. Um, so this so, would be a big-time move for them. And for the Chargers, it makes sense because, in my opinion, Joe Alt's good. 
Very good. But there's other offensive line. There's if you want to tackle, you can go you can move back to eleven and still get nobody's been taking yet. At least yeah. Fuaga or Olu Fushanu. Like there's other guys there. Um so I like the move for the Chargers. Well, and, and people are saying that it's not enough and they're saying eleven and twenty three. The way I looked at it, it's like, look, you can have twenty three this year, or you can have the pick of someone who's playing a rookie quarterback next year in the first round. The chances that it's going to be significantly higher than 23, like at least 10 picks higher, I think is, is would be enough yeah. incentive that I will take your one next year rather than your 23 this year. But they could look at it that way. It wouldn't cost both first this year um, not to move up just to number. I mean, we're talking about six spots Yeah, mm -hmm. for the fourth quarterback. I get the desperation. Still getting a first rounder. Yeah. R right. The, the, as, as much as J.J. McCarthy is getting some buzz right now, it's it's all about – the motivation, the amount of teams that are competing, and I think it would really that's, come down to one or two. Yeah, that's a and good point. I, I just can't imagine that price. It might be more than I was a little surprised. I thought that was a little light. You know, I I would think that they would want a a twenty twenty four pick something immediately, maybe like third fourth round or something like that <laughs> instead of waiting for next year's fifth. But definitely, it's going to include a future first rounder. There's no uh, yeah. so. It, regardless, it, spending time worrying about the draft compensation isn't really the point of this exercise. Whatever it is, it'll be. Um, but the Vikings get their guy. Yeah. Well, speaking of teams that might be competing for a guy for like J.J. McCarthy, I'm Joe Shane from the Giants organization, GM, and Brian Dayball. I'm like, damn it. They got, they got in front of me. They got J.J. McCarthy. But then that leaves me with the sixth overall pick. I have Daniel Jones there. I just don't see a lot of playmakers on the offense. So... I take arguably some people think the number one wide receiver, number two Malik Neighbors from LSU, and I just give Daniel Jones, who you know I was actually talking with a Giants fan this past weekend. He's a fan of Daniel Jones. He thinks that maybe he hasn't had the best opportunity to showcase his abilities, so he wants to give another playmaker. Malik Neighbors is definitely that size, speed, versatility, great catch radius. Really just adds another element to a receiving core right now for the Giants. Darius Slayton, Wandell Robinson, Jalen Hyatt was a was a pick last year, but now you get a legitimate number one wide receiver for Daniel Jones in that Giants organization. So there's a second wide receiver off the board. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's where if you're the Bears, you're nervous that it's Odunze instead yeah. of Malik Neighbors. But Maybe. um I I think as you, we see this play out, it's kind of take your pick. If J.J. McCarthy slips up ahead of that Bears pick, one of those guys is going to fall and give the Bears <laughs> the opportunity to draft another wide receiver. Somebody good's going to be there, and we're getting closer and closer to that pick. For now, we move on to number seven, the Tennessee Titans. Uh, this And this is where I have them taking somebody else. The Bears could be very interested, and I'm just not sure he's going to fall. Uh, past the Titans here, and that is Joe Alt, the left tackle from Notre Dame. And Titans need more help on that offensive line. They could definitely use a guy like Joe Alt, so he comes off the board here at number seven, which leads one more pick. The Atlanta Falcons ahead of the Bears at number nine, Carm. And I do believe that the Falcons will address their biggest need, which is an edge rusher. Uh, so I think the first defensive player goes off the board at eight and they do take the one-time five-star prospect out of Alabama in Dallas Turner 6'3 247 pounds with a 34 and three inch three eighth inch arms that's right and by the way I love hand size he's got big hands nine and seven eighth inches let's go uh guy to get to the quarterback and the Falcons address their defense after aggressively addressing their offense all off season long. I think that's a pretty basic chalk selection by me, but one that has a great chance of hitting. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's just a matter of who they take to help that defense. Right. They they need pass rushers. Yes, and I yeah. think uh, I think Dallas Turner makes a lot of sense there. Do they reach for Jared Verse? We'll see. Do they maybe they look to trade back, but. They, the Falcons obviously need some some help brushing the quarterback. So are we in agreement there's no chance the Falcons go wide receiver there since they now have Darnell Mooney on their team? <laughs> Drake, Drake London, London, Kyle Pitts. Well, Moore. I, I, I would like to just examine what you just said because they just signed Darnell Mooney? It's a three-year with good 39 mil. 
You I know 20, it was, 26 well, guaranteed, 39 mil. Yes. But I always say follow the money. And so taking the money out of it, I'm like, just because you signed Darren L. Mooney doesn't mean you should draft Roma Dunze. Should not draft Roma Dunze. Mm -hmm. uh, the money they paid him, though, and they already have a bunch of weapons out there that help they need on defense is a little bit greater after adding yeah. Kirk Cousins. I My gut says that they they would not draft a wide receiver there, but I'm not going to say it's no chance. You never know, man. Yeah. It's an NFL draft. Anything can honestly happen. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, going to say it's no chance. This, that's a team that scares me for trading down to. That's an interesting yes. angle. Because then mm -hmm. if some team leapfrogs the Bears, then I'm really concerned that if, if let's say, we're about to get to this, but let's say hypothetically one Odunze, well, he might not be there now. Yeah. If no doubt. someone comes up, without a doubt, I think that – and. and but I would expect to see more than one trade in the top eight. Yeah, but we have it going. We only have mm -hmm. one. It, it, well, also, before we get to Nick's pick and your whole Odunze take, I've, you can also have a deep discussion about whether or not the Bears actually, their biggest need is wide receiver there and whether they would prioritize what they would view their biggest need, which I don't think anybody at this point would say is wide receiver. It's an interesting conversation. As much as they Mark. need another wide receiver. No doubt. Um, you know what? Actually, before we get to that ninth overall pick, you guys, Got to tell everybody about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And they're easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And look, March is over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off in the month of April. Be a part of the action on Prize Picks. For both men's and women's college basketball, get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. And you can now win up to, again, 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So you could take Caitlin Clark more than 32 and a half points today and Falaje Johnson more than 15 and a half points. Put $20 down and get 60 bucks just like that. And first you have to go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use that code CHGO for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash CHGO. And remember, use that code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And there's never been a better time to become a CHGO diehard. I was just, you know, was up early this morning and uh, had the CHGO White Sox weekly newsletter pop in my inbox from Ooh. Vinny Duber. Um, got the GOAT 101 newsletter a few days ago as well. Uh, diehards can get access to my newsletter that comes out and the, our Bears Things newsletter. And, of course, all the other perks, which includes – the exclusive Discord that mm -hmm. you have access to. A lot of great Bears discussion going on there. And all the sports that we cover here, too. There's a channel for each of those. Um, and on top of that, you get 20% off all merch, all events. So if you're thinking about coming to our draft event, which you should be able to uh, or should want to come. Sign mm -hmm. up for Friday. Uh, again, people are coming. Lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> almost sold out on thursday and uh we're gonna f uh, a big party both nights so you want to be there uh if you aren't aren't able to make it thursday night come friday and again if you're a diehard you get 20 percent off so now's the time to do that all csgo.com slash diehard all csgo.com slash events to get the uh direct link to buy tickets to the draft party and um we're excited so now is the best time to become a csgo diehard Plenty of reasons in April. April's a busy month on the sports calendar in Chicago because you got two baseball mm -hmm. teams that started up. You still got the Black Blackhawks finishing up their season. You still got the Bulls Whatever trying they to do. get the play-in tournament. The big, big game that I'll be there. Big win last night in Minnesota. Yeah, I'm surprised about that one. After losing to the Nets. Who they play tonight? Uh, the Atlanta Hawks, who are in the 10th spot. The Bulls are a game and a half up. And, Ooh, that's uh, a big game. And CHGO Bulls will have full coverage for you this evening. So if they win tonight... Are they? Mm, they're, it's, yeah, they're pretty much locking in that nine. Sure, you can say that if you want to. And then they would get a home game. Is that how this yes, works? nine versus ten. They would have the home game. Then they would, and then they'd have the right to get smoked by Miami or Philly <sighs> on the road or the Celtics. Well, if you no, so you get you got to win the nine ten game. Then you got to play the loser of the seven eight game. Mm. 
So whoever that is, they'd be on the road for that. If they win that, then they would be in the playoffs as the eighth seed, and they'd have a right to get swept by the Celtics. It'd be a sweet. A lot of that needs to happen. But Sounds great. Go Bulls. The bottom line is their championship is the 9-10 game versus Atlanta. In <laughs> yeah. weeks. That's their championship. <laughs> Can they win the 9-10 game for the second straight year back-to-back titles? Bulls. I'm, I'm here for that. I'm here for yeah, that. All right. Um, well, the, and the point is that we have you covered on all these sports yep, teams. Yep. Now it's time to be a diehard. It is a busy, busy month, of course, leading up to the draft. And there's going to be movement. I'm promising you this this week movement. on the Bears 100 draft database. Um we're working on it. Yeah, we owe you uh, the next batch of prospects coming out. And there's also, I can tell you for sure, going to be some movement even in the top 20 that we already released. So that's coming later this week. And that is exclusive for CHDO diehards. All right, let's take a look at best available now. As mm-hmm. Nick is on the clock mm-hmm. with this number nine overall pick that the Bears possess. And based on the picks we've already made, here are some of the players on the board. And I think we mostly use our Bears 100 database to list this. And yeah. I think it's in pretty much the order. We have it right now. But Roma Dunze, still on the board, which is a dream scenario for, I know, a lot of Bears fans. Brock Bowers, if the Bears want to get greedy and go tight end. Byron Murphy, great three technique coming out of Texas, which is an interesting player to discuss. Jackson Bowers Johnson might seem mm-hmm. a little rich for a center at this point, but I don't know if you guys have watched the Bears play center. Uh, and he really, since Olin Cruz retired, uh, but that might be a position worth investing in. Jared Verse, best available edge player. Gets to the quarterback. We're kind of giving you the best available player at each one of these positions. Um, and then with Joe Alt off the board, Talise Fuaga from Oregon State is our top-rated tackle. So, Nick, one of these six players, yeah. who are you going with? I would recommend picking one in particular, or the chat might kill you. Yeah, so I like to live, and I like to see what the Bears are actually going to do with that ninth pick come April 25th. So I'm going with Roma Dunze from Washington, the wide receiver room. Look, there's a lot of reasons why. Oh! Yeah, yeah, Rome, there we go. Rome. Nick, um, Rome. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why this makes sense. One, he would qu- qualify as that blue chip player, a guy that can elevate over defenders, make contested catches, has great body control. But also think about it like this. Yes, the Bears did just get Keenan Allen, but... How long is Keenan Allen going to realistically be here after, you know, this season? Maybe two, three max. But you have a guy in the chamber with Ed Roman Dunze who's not only going to be learning from DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, but then when it's his time to be that guy, once Keenan Allen departs, like he's going to be ready to go and be, you know, just in prime lockstep with Caleb Williams. But it's just another weapon. Now there's no excuse for Caleb Williams, this Bears offense, to not just only get rolling this season, but ha- to have continuous success now that the wide receiver position is arguably the best position on your roster. So Roma Dunze rounds out um, the top nine picks that we have selected here, and the Bears offense is stacked. So how much, Nick, uh, sitting in that spot, did you consider trading out, if at all? Well, look, this is a deep wide receiver draft. Yeah. And I think that if you're in Ryan Poles' position and if you like, let's say, let's, let's just put Jared Verse out there. Like, you have a really highly graded Jared Verse. You know it's position of need. I wonder how that compares to where Roma Dunze is on their board. So I think it is a consideration for sure. And knowing that if you get maybe a second round pick this year in return, like you can find good wide receivers. So it's definitely on the board. And also like Byron Murphy's a he's a good player too. He also fits that defensive interior position that I think the you know, ideally Matt Eberflus would like at that spot. So, I mean, one of the things uh, obviously to consider is what you just brought up, the depth of wide receiver. There's a lot of wide receivers in this draft. Now, you don't necessarily have access to all of those guys because if we're going to be honest, that's a wide receiver's top two rounds. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the sweet spot. Yeah. Once you get in the third, your hit rate's a lot lower. Right now, you don't have a second round pick. So if you're going to trade, if you're not going to take a wide receiver there, I feel like you got to trade back and add a second round pick, um, which is no guarantee you're even going to be able to do that. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, so if you're weighing wide receiver versus edge rusher, and you might say, well, there's way more wide receivers in this draft than edge rushers. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we go edge. However, there's also way more guys, I feel like, that you can sign in August That's also to be your point. number two edge rusher, just like they did last year. Yeah. Right? Uh, and it doesn't even have to be that position. Like, Clay is Campbell still out there. 
on the interior. Like like there's there's thirty year old dudes that but, you can you can sign. That's to, an interesting name too, by the way, just because like Atlanta's dying for help there, and yet they he's leaving me out there. But keep going. Yeah, well, he's also thirty eight, and so the, but but my point is, and I think there's a lot of guys kind of in that. Um, like uh, this isn't a position of need for the Bears. Like Stephon Gilmore is unsigned right now too. Mm-hmm. There's some of those older players that you're going to see sign it most likely after the draft. And that's what the Bears have done too. Is they've signed like Yannick Ngakwe, Rasheem Green, like yeah. guys that are veterans that you know you're hoping more from Yannick Ngakwe. Ideally, I think the Bears were until the injury, but that's kind of the route that they just added a veteran player, maybe better at stopping the run, but not the big. But, but, you but know. my point is, who are those wide? If you Pass on wide receiver in this scenario. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe there's a scenario where all three of those guys are gone. And you're like, well, now there's a gap down yeah. to Brian Thomas. Or in that situation, That's, I kind of like trading back and then still drafting Brian Thomas. Oh, be- but I just feel like, like I don't know. I just cannot see the Bears signing Odell Beckham. They've never had. They've never done it to this point, and they've needed wide receivers yeah. badly. They would have rather traded a second round pick for Chase Claypool. Whoops. Um, <laughs> so. I mean, I think the home run for the Bears is to trade out, get more picks, and hit on those picks. Let me speak obvious things, right? Like that. Yeah, would, I think the home run is in this. If it plays out this way, is to just don't overthink it. Draft Roma Dunze, pair with Caleb Williams. Boom. Right. Super Bowl. Well, that's the safe guaranteed. Play. That's the safe play. I mean, I, I'm just talking about home runs. Is that you get two good players that you hit on one of your later round guys who is every bit the Roma Dunze. Somebody in the, one of the guys in this deep wide receiver class is going to be probably as good as a Dunze or neighbors. And people are, but the 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 problem when you go that route is will they be the ones to identify it? Mm-hmm. And they Ryan Pulse history to this point is Valus Jones and Tyler Scott. So the answer, so. Is he going to have the confidence to identify a receiver that's going to be there later, trade out of it, if he views wide receiver as a pressing need for the Bears, which he probably does, would, would he do that? Or would he just go all chips in, I know, I feel safe, I feel comfortable, Keenan Allen's 32, I'm going to do this right here. I, I, it'll, you know, I, it's an interesting conversation there, Mark. And like, Ideally, too, let's say you do trade back, Look, we keep saying Brian Thomas Jr.'s name from LSU. Like, that would be when I'm thinking ideal scenarios when you're trading back. If you somehow get him and you're still able to get, I don't know, his top 100 pick, like, and you're able to fill another position of need, man, then that looks really, if you're at Ryan Poles, this looks really enticing for a trade back scenario because you do fill a position of need still at wide receiver, but then. Who's to say we don't know what that that next pick could be? Could it be a center like Zach Frazier from West Virginia? Could it be you know an edge rusher that can also be maybe available in the second round? So then you you are addressing both needs there. So it, it it's definitely really intriguing. And let's let's read into one of Paul's comments that uh, you just heard him talk about at. Where were you just at the owners of meetings? Whatever that was, outstanding. Yeah, thanks for listening to the uh, two shows I did from there. It's a great job by you. Yeah. Um, you were on those shows. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you were gone. I wasn't myself. Thank you for coming back. I feel so much better. Uh, <laughs> okay, he said about trading down. Quote that will kind of play out. We'll see what the numbers look like, and that will kind of dictate how far we can move back if we decide to do that. So my read into that, as I am the most brilliant person at reading into what people say, mm-hmm. is that he's got a dude that he really likes. And so if they can go back a little bit and still get him, like they did with Darnell Wright, sure, we'll go back one pick and we'll add a fourth rounder in. But I, I want my guy. That still sounds like he's got a guy that he wants. That doesn't sound like I'm going to throw caution to the wind and trade back and see how many picks we can acquire. If it's, yeah. he could, he could, uh, well, look, even last year they, they had their guy. They were willing to trade back one spot because they knew they that Philly wasn't taking their guy. That's what I just said. No, I know. So, so like I still I tried to hog, carm, carm, hog. I, I still think that they're going to. I mean, this is really every year. You're going to have your guys, the buckets of players, right? Or cloud, Ryan Pace just called clouds. So don't ever say that again. Let's <laughs> forget about go, that. Buckets way better. Clouds. You a cloud suck. guy or a bucket guy? I'm a bucket guy. Give you me a bucket. I get buckets. O- Ozo bucket. Clark. I did get to go to Bozo Buckets as a kid. Shout out Bozo Buckets. Who was it that I know missed the first bucket? Oh, a buddy of mine from high school. Greg Braggs. <laughs> Greg Braggs probably <laughs> yeah. missed the first bucket. Yeah, yeah. How do you miss the first bucket? It's like you literally could just lean over and just. I oh, mean, 
was just like, God, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. I knew it. <laughs> It's like the Homer Simpson thing. <laughs> well, last time I checked, though, Bozo Buckets doesn't have Miller Lights in it to bounce off of. That was, that was when I couldn't catch the for napkin. The, for those in the audio space, we have a bucket in front of us with a bunch of Miller Lights and fake ice, and Hogue picked up a piece of the fake ice, dumped it into the bucket. It clicked off the fake ice and, and dropped out of the bucket. Great play-by-play. Play. Play-by-play. Yeah. You learned your lesson from Thursday. I like that. That was good. Who was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm, trying to, I'm channeling my Joe Brand, my guy. Joe Brand's a great dude. Long live Joe Brand. Solid hair. Great Um, hair. Shut up. Yes, back to you. I don't even remember. The the point is, there's going to be a bunch of guys there that they're willing to take. And if all those guys get taken, then they're... Yeah. Or or if there's five of those guys still there... In that bucket, yeah. And they can move back a few spots and know they're getting one of those five guys because they're only trading back three spots or whatever. That's that's how these trades work. And... Sometimes those are tough decisions, but that's exactly why you you put these guys in buckets better than I put that piece of ice in. Well, that if, you, if, if you go back to last year and the fourth round move one spot down, giving up on Jalen Carter for Darnell Wright, they loved Darnell Wright. Mm-hmm. Loved him. They were Still not going yeah. to miss out. Now, do they love Adunze? Do they love Dallas Turner if he's there? Do they love whoever you want to pick? Jared Verse. Do they love Caleb Williams? Do, uh, they love they Caleb. Love they Caleb. love. Uh, they want everybody else to know that, 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 that <laughs> everyone loves. I don't know if people him. loving the show right now are loving what Roma Dunze would look like in a Bears uniform, though, because um, our guy Joey he put did it, it together. I mean, look yeah, at that. Look at this right This looks like a movie poster. If you're listening to the podcast, check out our Instagram uh, or our, I think we, yeah, we put it on Twitter it's, yesterday yeah, yeah. at we, CHGO underscore bears on Instagram. It's at CHGO underscore sports. So you can see this. We like yeah. to call this Joey bears porn. We Joey. We don't bears like porn? it called that. I don't think we do. This well, looks so real. Like I have to believe that they are taking him at nine. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is, there's no way this is just an edit. Hopefully I don't even think it's a real shop. Yeah. yeah actual, is, Joey he, actually got Roman to say to take a photo. Hopefully he makes that his like profile pick once he gets drafted to the bears. It's right there. I think he should just do Let it today. Do. I mean, he does look good. Montez Sweat did that. A Joey picture. Oh yeah, he's Montez Sweat's. You know, profile Twitter picture. pick is a, is is Joey porn. Could, <laughs> could Joey? <laughs> I think Devin like, Hester also shared one of his photos. Yeah, in like a yep. video. Yeah. Is there any way that Joey could do a carm porn thing and just make me no. look? <laughs> nope, can't do that. Nobody <laughs> no, wants to no. see that. I do. I I do. Nobody <laughs> wants to see right carm porn. I mean, AI is pretty crazy nowadays. Come on, so you could do whatever you want. I'm, I'm asking for I just it. updated my phone. If you are going to do see. porn, you might want to AI that. I'm just warning you. <laughs> I'm just giving you some advice. Listen, I'm just asking Joey to do what he can do. That's all I'm doing. I don't know what you're talking about over there. Way over my head. I'm just asking for just make me look good in one big thing. Come on. Could, it's one big thing? Could, yes. <laughs> don't even worry about that part. I'm just talking well, about, you know. The Joey can take care of that for you. <laughs> Thank you. It's my guy. That's what he. he Lord, no, hey. Oh, look. damn. So I have this thing on my phone, you guys, where I can actually search up a picture, and then circle it. So Mark, if I were to circle you, yeah, it should be able to find you on. Oh no, like it would find pictures that are you and Google search you. I That's guess creepy. if you're big time enough, I, I guess. I'll try it. I am real big. Quick. Sorry. It's are, you say, are you saying the pictures didn't show up when you searched? No, them? it's all random dudes that. Kind of have a tie and T-shirt on. Wow. I'll, I'm sorry. All right, we can move along, but I <laughs> I, I like to pick a fight with Carm uh, Uncommon Vision, um, who thinks that they'll go blind if there's Carm porn. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Come on, Uncommon. <laughs> it might. But happen. very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's gonna wrap up the uh, mock draft portion of this show. Karn has done some homework on a draft prospect that he's very excited to share with you, so we'll do that here in a second, but um, we got plenty coming up here at CSGO Sports. I just want to make sure everyone's up to speed. I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, Major League Baseball and their infinite wisdom decided to schedule both the uh, White Sox and Cubs (coughs) at home in this glorious city in the first week of April. Karn's not leaving for the second time in the show. For those keeping, we might need a... Might have to keep a counter going forward. Um, but, yeah, uh, Cubs, White Sox, both at home this week. Uh, great weather forecast in store because uh, the weather always is outstanding here the first week of April. Mm-hmm. CHL Cubs going to have you covered with pre- and post-game today. 
Chris Bryan, Colorado Rockies, in town for the home opener. And uh, actually, CHO Cubs go They're live on. right now. They're live right now. That pregame Let's has go. started. So if you're a Cubs fan, feel free to click over there. Give them a like. Hit the like button for them. Hit subscribe, but you're probably already subscribed. Same channel. Uh, and then CHO White Sox will bring you post game following their tilt with the Atlanta Braves. Nothing like starting 0-3 and then having to face the Atlanta Braves. That should be fun. Yeah, but you were right there, man. They were right there. White Sox. Three one one run losses, man. Great. They were so close. They were makes me Three so times. excited. They're gonna be 0 and six. I don't think they're gonna win sixty games this year. But regardless, CHO White Sox can have you covered. Uh and CHO Bulls, Carr mentioned this earlier, pre and post. Big game tonight against the Atlanta Hawks. Tune in six thirty for pregame. All right, you want to t- before we get super chats, you uh did homework on a certain offensive lineman, Carm. So I'm doing the deep dive on Joe Alt because I'm getting more excited about the Bears perhaps drafting somebody that uh, in this position that they would have a really hard time coming up to get because we all know the Bears are going to be a 10-win team plus next year, be a playoff team, and we'll never see the top 10. So, you know, guys like Joe Alt, they go in the top 10. He may be there at 9, although I doubt it. But if he is, this is where this spawned from. Now, do you know, do you know who his dad is? Joe Alt. Joe Alt's dad is John, John. John Alt. Played to Iowa. Correct. John Alt. Six foot eight inches of John Alt. A big, big dude. Kansas City Chief from 84 to 96, Hogue. Yeah. John Alt was such a big time player. He got his own key on the keyboard. Sure. Uh, f- first round pick, 21 overall. Born in Germany. Now, Germany. You said Iowa, okay? Go Hawks. Uh, he was a tight end his first two years. Mm-hmm. Now, how this is going to tie into into Joe? He was a first, and then then he then he moved over. Then he got to the NFL. Then he was a two time Pro Bowler. Now, bear tie in, John Alt from eighty from eighty four. John Alt played one hundred and seventy nine games in his NFL career. Also in the eighty four draft, one hundred and seventy nine games. The great Wilbur Marshall. There's your bear tie-in. That is tied oh. for the 18th most in the 84 class. Wilbur, of course, Super Bowl champion. Alt, by the way, decent durability. Six of his 13 seasons, played all 16 games. 13-year career, two Pro Bowlers, 149 starts. Now, all right, as we move along from John to Joe. John to Joe. John was... Joe's coach in high school at Totino Grace High School up uh, as, as the assistant O-line coach, all right? Okay. Good now, coach. Joe Alt, you might not know this, Hogue, but he had a huge growth spurt in high school. He started out high school as a skinny six-foot-inch dude who was the quarterback, mm-hmm. all right? He moved. Are you saying he wasn't born 6'7"? He was not born 6'7", but most people, they have their growth spurts, you know, uh, a little bit earlier than that. Quarterback as a freshman, inside linebacker, and then as a ju- switch to tight end as a junior, okay? And then Athletic. ultimately he ends up on the offensive line as he grows from 6'6", six to 6'7". Six, yeah. He was a three-star recruit. This was not uh, somebody that was, you know, your... Destined. Your, your, yeah. your destined dude, exactly, okay? Um, By the way, three stars still really good. Yeah, it's a good, but sure. He's got some stars. Uh, so how did he do this? John had Joe training four times per week as an offensive tackle, working on his skills, working on his footwork, working on his pass blocking as he got him ready for Notre Dame. Now he had scholarship offers from Iowa State and Kansas State and Northwestern and Missouri and Rutgers. So he chose the Irish, which makes me not like him, but that's okay. <laughs> no problem. Cole Komet likes him. Both Iowa and Northwestern wanted him. All right. Now, landing the plane for you out there, whoever just said land the plane. Uh, the, the, the plane is this. He soared. There's the plane. He soared at Notre Dame as he felt more and more comfortable with his six foot seven inch frame as he got better and better. And he's, you know, this is a guy that's coming out of his junior year. And, I mean, I, I think when you consider the bloodlines, when you consider the growth panel, when you consider the work ethic, when you consider everything, when you consider that Alt's aunt, uncle, and cousin 
all went to Notre Dame, and he followed in their footsteps because he's got a big heart and, and history. Joel could be the guy. By the way, he's 6'9". I think I put six seven in your head, so I apologize. No, he well, right. He spurted from six to six seven, and now he's six nine. I should have, I should have mentioned that. Yeah. He's well, gigantic. He's, he's a gigantic man. And athletic. Well, honestly, <sighs> if we're if we're if we're being fair, he's almost too tall. Like at some point, you you also need leverage and be able to get low when these really defensive ends are trying to bend around. Right the when corner these really too. skilled defensive Quick. ends can get around you, like. Think about Robert Quinn a few years ago and his awesome season with the Bears. How he was like literally somehow running on the sides of his ankles, or is how low he was getting. So at some point, you actually could be too tall. Now, I think Joe Alt's a really good player. I don't, I'm not going to hold that against him, his height. But yeah, he's you don't see you don't see many six nine left tackles for a reason. No. That's the reason. Yeah. He, but more so, you see him nowadays. At any rate, uh, but he's yeah, that's that's fair. It's a fair call out, and. Uh, you know, one of the things that we didn't mention as we, you know, can move on now, but, uh, you know, his brother, Mark Alt, is in the NHL, and he was a 2010 draft pick wow. in Carolina, that, and, and he's now a great defenseman for the LA Kings. Jeans, man. The athletic jeans. I mean, the family is insane. Good to be an Alt. It's good to be an Alt. You'd be, you be, you be, you be diving into a rich bloodline, 13 years in the NFL, Brother in the NHL. There it is. Okay, good job. Nice job on Joel. I learned. I learned a lot about Joel. Just maybe we need a deep. Maybe we need a deep calm dive on prospects. For all you BC Bears fans that didn't enjoy that deep dive, (laughs) I am offended, and I will. You guys learned something. You learned something. Don't say you didn't. If you didn't like it, just control alt delete. That's the show. Alt, he can yeah, shift he from his left to his right. He's got a good grab, and he's got a good hold. No, no, no. That's not the dives that I do. I go family. Go I go dive. history. We got to know about it's those. a unique karm dive. Yeah. I mean, you're selling. Me. I enjoyed. I you're enjoyed selling that. me on the family history with the genetics and all that. It matters, man. The dude's coming from some good bloodlines with a dad who knows what he's doing. He's got him in this position. He's got a good head on his shoulders. I, all these things matter about reaching your full potential. I'm just thinking, how tall is his brother? Six nine guy playing hockey? I don't know if his brother's That one six, I didn't nine. look up. Come let's on. Look. Do your homework, Carm. Wow. What are you even doing? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? No. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to be good for you, Code. Uh, Mark Alt. Did the doctor say you're at least not dying? <laughs> not dying. Chest x-rays, good. I don't have uh, anything terrible. I'm on antibiotics. I should be great in another two days. Okay, good. Um, I mean, I could still be dying in my head, but the doc says I'm not. So Now this has me thinking of Zachy Eady playing hockey. Because you know he played hockey? Oh, my God. Yeah. Apparently he played hockey. I, but, like, at what size? So- I, like, mean, I, I imagine, mean, still. I don't know. Did he max out at seven? That's I mean, ridiculous. Edie, Edie's an adorable story. The mom in the stands, 6'3", just sitting there with that smile on her face. They can't His stop mom's 6'3"? 6'3". Three? Six, three. Oh. Born in Canada. Mom is Chinese. Dad's white. The, the guy, the, Zach Edie, uh, we don't want, I don't want to talk about this at all. It makes me think of Braggs, and I'm getting uncomfortable. But the guy was not good uh, or was not anywhere close to the player that he is now. I should rephrase. I mean, he the, the, he is a cheat code in this tournament. The guy's been he unbelievable. Is a cheat code. Well, we'll yeah. see in the in the uh, next round though, because Purdue shoots well from the perimeter. They can win that game. Yeah, but North Carolina State has that dude who's basically a left tackle himself. Yeah, it's like it's got a football body he almost. He's not big enough. He's gonna. He well, weighs three hundred fifteen pounds. Yeah, he's got, well, he's got he's, girth. He's got seven four on his ass. That jump hook's good. It could be swatted in his face. Girth. I understand, but my one criticism is Edie he doesn't make it consistently enough. I, I had this exact discussion with Braggs last night, yeah. and yeah. what he told me was a really good point, which is the Big Ten has historically had a ton of good big men, so this isn't something Edie isn't used to. No, this is different, man. This is the he's, one he's guy wider. He's, he's, he can he's body like around all these dudes, and this is the this is this will be a guy he can't move. He's gonna have the height advantage, but yeah, it'll be interesting to watch. Um, the the name he brought I, up I, was like Hunter Dickinson. I'm like, all right, there's a little bit of width there. I like Purdue. North Carolina State story is incredible, though. They mm-hmm. were 17 and 14, played on Tuesday of the ACC tournament, won five if games. If O'Connell together. doesn't make that buzzer exactly, shot exactly. in the semifinals of the ACC tournament, they're not in the tur- They don't make the tournament. Co- correct. Correct. That's crazy. Yeah. Correct. That goes in. They win in overtime. Now they're in the final four. That's incredible. That's their run. Yeah. Say goodnight. Let's just get the Purdue UConn final that we all would like to see at this I point. I want to yeah. see. And that's what's going to be. That. And I love Braggs, and I pick Purdue to win. 
But the way UConn's playing right now. Oh, well, UConn's the favorite. There's no doubt. Yeah. Like maybe by eight points. UConn's better than the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going down that road. <laughs> but they might be. The low bar. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get to Super Chats and uh, close out this show today. It's been fun. Uh, uh, we got Michael Scaletta. Not Carm- a super chat, but Carm- shout also, him out. Yeah. yeah, you have to shout out the diehards today too, Carm. Uh, uh, Michael Scaletta said, I signed up to be a diehard because they won. So Braggs got CHGO a new member. Look at that. Good job, Braggs. Congratulations, Greg. Is that a picture of Robert Flores, by the way? Or is that him? Is that Michael? You look like Robert Flores. I think, I think it's Or Michael. it's Robert Flores. It's, I think little, it's Michael. But regardless, Michael, welcome to be... To Die Hard World, we appreciate you very much. Football CF Candy coming in here with a 199 pound <laughs> sterling. Likes Leatu Latu. Edge one. Don't care about the injuries. He's TJ Watt. Mm. Love that. He's going to be a good football player. Whoever takes him. Just got to get through the injuries. Uh, we have Ryan with a 499 super chat. Turner from. Alabama or Olu from Penn State. Marvin Harrison Jr. will be gone by nine. I'm biased being previous uh, O-line, but games start up front. JF1 against Brown's O-line was criminal. That was that was criminal. That's a good way to describe that first game. I am not going to complain if they take an O-lineman. I, I definitely think that case can be made that as good as Braxton Jones has been and has proved and He's I think you too. still want him to, to develop and you you trust him to there's it the flip side of that is it also wouldn't surprise me if halfway through the season we're saying you know in an ideal world Braxton Jones is your swing tackle yeah yeah which he would it's a good be. position to be in then you, you have him swing tackle if you yeah. draft another darn all right now you got bookends at both spots and Braxton Jones is your swing tackle with maybe the potential to fill in at guard should Tevin Jenkins go down again which is something you always have to account for, all of a sudden you feel better about your depth. Now, we don't really know if Braxton Jones can play guard, though, so that's sort of a projection. What did the right tackle get that we were bidding on last year? $18 million, $19 million? McGlinchey? Yeah, oh, what yeah. did McGlinchey get? Uh, I don't know about the top of my head. Man, a lot of money. A lot More of than money. the Bears it, were willing to it, pay. It was close to $20 million. My point is that if you bookend right tackle and left tackle, you are giving yourself flexibility across the roster for a while here yeah. that you don't yeah, have to pay. Yeah, young guys. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Real, real quick, I just want to ask a question here. Uh, and I know we're pretty deep into the show, but I, I'm just curious now. So Caleb has obviously played with Olufashanu in his high school career. Yeah. Who do you think Caleb would prefer at number nine? And that could be a whole other show, I guess. But Ooh. would he prefer he seems his friendly. old high school lineman? If Caleb Williams was drafting, who would he pick? Yeah. It's a solid segment there, Steven. Like, like, a pos- like even look at it just position. Does he want lineman? Does he want another wide receiver? It'd be hard for him to know because he hasn't played behind the Bears line. Right. Right. Um, but just having more playmakers around him, like, can never have enough if playmakers. I, was him, I, bet his, I bet the Caleb mentality was give me another playmaker because I'll make it work with who's ever blocking. See, I would want to know that I'm locked up and safe and no one's going to kill me. I don't so want to be running around. Tackle. And and he retweeted our, vi- our video or put out on Instagram of the Harbaugh line. talking yeah. about the old line. So there's your answer. Mm-hmm. Caleb has spoken. He wants line. Karma's is wrong. Protect. The quarterback. Caleb has spoken. Yeah. Yeah. Great job. Oh, you did that. That was all you, buddy. I'm not even going to look at you after whatever that noise was that you just made. <laughs> Caleb Stop. has. That, you're going to be seeing that the rest of the day. Speaking of Caleb speaking, here's Caleb Burnett. Ah. Oh, another Caleb. $20 super chat. Look at that look by Caleb. Tell me that dude's not a great super chatter. Powerful look by Caleb. Okay, why don't you read a super chat then? Where the hell is Nuku? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I, I'm dealing with an issue over here. <laughs> no. Well, you guys also know that Caleb Burnett is a music and dinosaur content Jurassic output, like Jurassic World, like that series. He does music for that franchise. He this, does the Jurassic says Park. Mu- yeah, his shirt He's- says music by John. Williams on it, and it yeah, looks he's like a composer, it's in the, yeah. This looks like it's in the Jurassic Park writing on mm-hmm. his shirt. Yeah. Are you telling me this dude's royalty? Yes. yes. Way to go, Caleb. Thank you for uh, royalty. I mean, not like hands down royalty, but like very cool. His own yeah, I'm corner sure, of royalty. I'm pretty sure you called Shane Reardon royalty uh, on Thursday. So your definition of royalty is needs some work. It's Caleb, a floating. You're awesome. It's a floating definition. <laughs> it's a floating <laughs> definition. <laughs> 
<laughs> like everything else that comes out of your mouth. I can, I can, fi- I can find, I can make anyone royalty in some way, shape, or form. You're royalty. I am. You're yeah, car we royalty. Don't. That's right. You are. You're. A- Thank you to my guy Jack Silverstein, by the way, for uh, writing an article about me. I got to read this. It's so good. Well, maybe we'll read it. it. We'll read it once we. Okay. Get, what if you were to- like, it wasn't that good? Wow. Well, I no. He. I mean, he did a phenomenal job with. You know, limited resources. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated the read. Where I admit to being a thief and other things. It's um, how did Kevin Kadick describe it before the show? I think he said, <laughs> "If he had an editor, he'd never do the story." That's what he said. <laughs> if he had an editor, he'd tell Jack to pick a different story. Okay, okay. Uh, Kevin 19, would have been wrong. Yes, he would have so been wrong because Mark is amazing. Uh, Nineteen ninety nine from Caleb Burnett. Hey guys, been watching since the beginning two years ago. Y'all are the best in the biz. Thanks so much for being the best part of my workday. What should my bear's first tattoo be? The C, the bear's logo, or thanks and bear down. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of pressure to put on us. Yeah. Oof. I think it should be the CHGO logo or a picture mm-hmm. of Carm's face. Uh, you, uh, yeah, I, think yeah, he, I don't know, Caleb. I don't know about or, that one. Or... You can always go the Walking Bear logo too. What? From Don't do the thing where people get a tattoo like twenty twenty five Super Bowl champion. Don't do that with like a Bears thing because those usually backfire. Do you have a tattoo? No, I don't have a tattoo either. So Nick, this is your territory. What? What kind of? I don't know. I don't a Bears tattoo. I don't know. Do you, are you afraid of needles? Like I am. I don't know how I even did this in the first place. But how did you do that in the first place? Uh, Were you? I, I don't know. I just you conquered my fear. You go nine night. No, no, no <laughs> night, night, no night, night. But yeah, you gotta gotta workshop that. All right, hands down. Last super chat here, nine ninety nine. Great to be back live with CHGO. My guy. I gotta say, I'm disappointed with Nick for not trading back our nine pick. JK, love y'all. Hashtag Team Tigo. T O. Oh. I I mean, <laughs> Tigo. those who were. They want trade back at nine. Yeah, well, I'm just saying there were some people in the chat earlier that were maintaining that I was leaving because of um, bathroom issues. It was more of a throat maintenance situation. <laughs> so, <laughs> throat maintenance. <laughs> Thank you. Throat maintenance. It situation. was. I'm struggling, and I like to be honest, as you know. All right. <laughs> Too honest. Yes, too honest would be the way to go. Hey, uh, I hate to leave the show on sad news, but it's uh-huh. worth mentioning. Um, former Illini cornerback and um, <laughs> Dolphins cornerback Vontae Davis was found dead this morning, oh, apparently, at his Southwest Ranch's home in Florida. Um, this is from WSVN down there in Florida. Death investigation is underway after the body of former Miami Dolphins cornerback Vontae Davis was found at a, at a residence in Southwest Ranches. Um, they arrived at the scene in the area this morning. The and police said that a male was found deceased at the home and that no foul pay, play was involved. So, very sad news. It doesn't say how old Vontae Davis was. I think what boy, old enough. Thirty-five. Like Thirty-five, though. Yeah, somewhere in there. That's nuts. It's a tough world uh, out there. Stay safe, everybody, and, yeah, hug your loved ones. All right. Um, new diehards as an awkward transition, but let's do that anyway. Michael. On the day that Jack Silverstein puts out an amazing story about me and Michael ah, Jordan, you are our Michael MJ today, Michael. You also I'm looking up the story. You also love oh, yeah. a good Chicago dog. You love... Being with your loved ones, and you love CHGO, and we love you, Michael. Welcome in. Taylor. I mean, so many options here, but this Taylor, for me, it's just all about style. Just brings it every single day. The flow makes you feel good, gets you bouncing. When Taylor walks in the room, your day instantly becomes better. Taylor, thank you for making our days better. Today better. Welcome to being a diehard. And Tim. My guy, Tim, great college roommate, made a great bratwurst, smoked a little bit too much weed, but he got it together. This Tim, though, has always had it together, which is why 
He had the vision, the tenacity, the ability to join us and become a diehard. Welcome, Tim. And I don't want to put a preference on any of the four today, but I got to do it. Our top diehard today <laughs> is Loof. <laughs> Loof. Can you believe we pulled a Loof in? A Loof that will go to any effort, any crevice <laughs> to get you as clean as possible. The Loof. There is no place that Loof will not go. No, yeah. And Loof is not just a one-time thing. Loof's there Consistent. whenever you need to Loof. <laughs> You're a Loof. And I need Loof. I need more Loofs. Loof is not a loaf. Loof is a goat. Loof is our man or woman. I don't know what gender that is. Either way, <laughs> Loof. Oh, God, we love hard. you. Loof killed Carm. Loof is the best. Thank you, Loof. <laughs> Welcome to being a diehard. Hey, Carm, that one oh, no. Kadok with the fool. <laughs> he April fooled us with Loof. Oh, he oh. April fooled us. This guy. <laughs> you got duped. I got duped. You got duped. I you got, got duped. duped. Screw you, Loof. But you were still a great diehard, even when you weren't, even for the one minute Your you were Your favorite diehard. diehard of the day wasn't even real. Man, Man. that's just so All sad. All the crevices and not even. You know, I got to say, that's the rare April Fool's joke that land, landed. That was well done. I'm, most, I'm, most, most of them are stupid. I'm so bummed. I was seriously excited. We didn't question that, too. We're like, Loof, huh? That's a interesting... Well, he had a guy named Sushi once. <laughs> That's right. So you never know. TWE's got it. Loof lives on. I don't care. Loof that it was lives that. on. Loof is real. I don't... People will remember Loof. By the way, how long is his story he wrote about you? Yeah, long. This is... It goes on forever and ever. We talked for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these was photos a... of young Mark. Wow. It was a great... It was a gr Jack's hey, awesome, man. This is longer than the Washington Post story on Kim Mulkey. You you low key kind of look like me in these photos. This is kind of crazy. Yes, you're my son. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's kind of weird. Look at it. like I'm like. Whoa. You mean you got better looking as you got older, and I went the other way? But wow, this is. And I mean, I got pictures of Granville waiters in there. We you're got thirty years older than him. What are you talking about? We don't know what Nick's gonna look like when he's your age. No, I'm gonna. Look I didn't look like that at his age. Look at this guy. Well, that means you got better looking as you got older. No, 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 no. That dude in that picture, I'm adorable. And it went, <laughs> and it went the other way. Oh, this okay. guy just kept going up. I wow. was just, you know. It's crazy. Okay. I'm going to read this. It's a, right. it's a good wait. read. Yeah. I'm telling you, J Jack's amazing. And there's some, he had also put some cool links in there, too, for those. Well, Jack does great work. Mm -hmm. His history Deep stuff's dive, outstanding. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, sad state for the Chicago Bulls when he's writing a Bulls story about you. <laughs> I'm not going to dispute that at all. <laughs> but that, I I, uh, I said a lot of things in there that I'm like, <laughs> that was a little vulnerable. Oh, I that can't wait to read that. That was a good read. That was a little, that was a little too maybe, much. Maybe tomorrow's podcast. I'd like to firstly apologize uh, f uh, formally to the Chicago Bulls for – trying to sneak into the 1993 NBA Finals and getting arrested. Uh, but if you also, if you could expunge that off my record, that'd be sweet. You keep talking about it. You bring it up it every expunged. month. Expunged. It should be expunged. Is it on your record? Maybe you need a loofah. Yes, I was fingerprinted. <laughs> fingerprinted. And... How do people get DUIs caressed? Away, but you can't get sneaking into an NBA Finals game off your record. I, don't, don't mess with uh, don't mess with the NBA Finals. Did prevent you from getting a job? Almost. And it did prevent the, the girlfriend that I got caught with her. She didn't get a job because of it. She oh. didn't know that was the reason. Can you believe that? But how did she, but then you told her? No, like she, like it just oh. somehow, it can't, she, I forget the exact story, but she, they were like, look, because it was like a probation officer job. And they were like, um. and they, so they almost would want criminals because they'll understand who's dealing. But they're like, so they like encourage, please, you can tell us anything that has happened to you mm. like have you ever been arrested mm. and she's like no i never you know like she didn't think of it oh like and and they wrote it up as theft 
And she found out somehow about that afterwards and didn't get the so gig because she basically, of it. So she basically didn't get it because she lied. She it didn't looked mean like she to li- lie. It looked but, like she lied. Yeah. But she, she's like thinking like, oh, yeah, that one time I got arrested for sneaking into a game. That doesn't count. With my boyfriend. Who, you kind of got to know, I guess. Mm. It was. Has anyone besides me on the show not gotten arrested? I have not gotten arrested. Nick? Well, I got a. I don't. I don't. Is it an arrest? I got a. What is it? Uh, don't Paula? get yourself in trouble right now. Uh, possession of alcohol under legal age at Iowa. That's arrested, buddy. All right. So then, Did boom. Get, no, that's not put on his record. It was. Well, no, I had to get it off my record. Now it's uh, off my record. That's my point. You can get that off, but you can't get sneaking into the. Forest. I didn't think I needed to get it off, and now it's like. That was like two. Now months I'm kind of like, months heard, into Iowa. Too. I learned the expunge story like recently. Because oh. so, like she, even like a, like a, I don't know six months ago she tried to get into Canada, and they nearly stopped her going going into Canada because it was still there. Jeez, so, you can't go to Canada. I don't know if I can go to Canada. Can you uh, go to London? I've been out of the country, so yes, I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it get written up differently for me. I don't. I still want the thing off my record. I didn't do anything. Are you admitting to it. making her the fall guy? Mm. You put it all on her. That could have been a thing. I mean, I wish I'd have thought of it that way, but no, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we got one last super chat before we head out. $10 from Hands Down, his second super chat today. Hippo character collapses to the ground and his chair breaks while the words wrecked appear above him. I'm guessing this is in reference to us getting uh, loofed or fooled on April we Fool's loofed. Day. We got loofed. We got loofed by our own guy. It's messed up. It's messed up, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, also, I saw in there that Gary Ross wants you all to know that the commander signed Jeff Driscoll. Not Ross on the case, always and forever, <clears throat> except for the one story that he sent me today that was an April Fool's joke that he didn't get, and then I told everybody that that happened, and then I got yelled at. <laughs> and, then you, and then you made Ross the, the fall guy. Yes, it was my fault. It was my fault. It was my fault. It was my fault. Are you saying Gary Ross got a story wrong? First time ever. First time ever. It happens to everybody, man. It happens to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and I've not, I mean, I'm a one a dayer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're out of here. Tomorrow we're gonna have more on the draft. We'll be uh, breaking down some more draft prospects, and um, got some guests lined up this week too that we're excited about. So, um, gonna be a fun week here on the show. Hopefully, you enjoyed <laughs> our mock draft episode today. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at chgo underscore bears. Uh, Instagram is where you can go check out that Roma Dunze photo. In case you're listening to the podcast, couldn't see it live. Uh, Nick's gonna be rooting hard for Caitlin Clark tonight. They better not lose. God, we you. all I, come on, take down LSU. Let's this, go. This will be the first time in my life I think I root for Iowa. Yep. What's going on in my life right now? I'm rooting for Purdue, Purdue Iowa. For I like Iowa. this Big Ten. It's a lot of this, this is right. Follow through for the think, win. I don't think Caitlin Clark needs your shooting advice. Gene Katie was giving it to uh, Zach Eady yesterday. I saw that. Follow through. So oh, yeah, that so was, yeah, Katie. I did see that. Gene Katie's allowed to give coaching advice from the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Matt Painter yeah. was his assistant. All right, look. Sure. You are not allowed to give Caitlin sure. Clark shooting Go advice. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sure that There's Zach, a little bit of a difference between you and Gene Katie. I'm sure Zach Katie heard Gene Katie, and the next time he went up and followed through and he shot that air ball. <laughs> <laughs> was the air ball the next? I thought he made the next one. No, he The next one he twice. did make, but about... Oh, but that air ball... Or, Five minutes later, was twice. the air ball because Zach Eady's just tall. He's not good at sports. I Part of me did want to point out, dude, you had 40 points, 15 rebounds, an insane game. You airballed a free throw. Dude's you just know, tall. You know, you, could, you can't airball a free throw. Just the arc. I don't know. That should it make happens. it harder to air. He should be able to reach and just like almost dunk it from the free throw line. Like the uh, thingy. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. Have Bye a great guys. day. Go silly like the mayor.